Thanks for watching this portion of Garage Logic today on our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button if you wouldn't mind. And also thanks to our friends at Everest Men's Health for sponsoring this. Go to EverestMensHealth.com today to see if they can help you with better energy and better health. And catch the Garage Logic podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. The, uh, the fellas uh, from around the world are meeting in Scotland now, uh, pretending that they're uh, interested in saving the earth. Oh, sure. And we only have a new 10 years to do it. That's Biden's latest Ten plan. Now. We have huh. a new, this decade has to be the decade. But uh, the Daily Mail, God bless them, they, they put reporters on the scene just to count private jets. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos, $77 million Gulfstream Gulf leads parade of 400 private jets into COP26, including Prince Albert of Monaco, Scores of royals and dozens of green CEOs as huge traffic jam forces empty planes to fly 30 miles in order to park the plane. <laughs> Mail Online watches plane after plane of dignitaries landed in Glasgow and Edinburgh for the meeting. Prince Albert of Monaco was among those choosing to fly private. The Bank of America, which in PR documents boasts of its commitment to, sa to sustainability, owned one of the jets. Prince Charles is among those traveling by non-commercial plane from the G20 in Rome. Mail Online can reveal Boris Johnson is kicking off uh, the summit today, exhorting world leaders to back up their talk with action. This is, uh, this is obscenely ridiculous. This is just obscenely ridiculous. In if you Rome, offset your carbon, oh, it's God. the only choice for somebody <laughs> like me yeah. who is traveling the world to win this battle. It's a battle. Uh, I negotiated the Paris Accords uh, for the United States. Mm -hmm, I've mm -hmm. been involved in this fight for years. I negotiated with President Xi to bring President Xi to the table so years, we could get Joe, Paris. Years. And uh, I believe the time it takes me to get somewhere. I can't sail across the ocean. Yeah. I have to fly to meet with people and you get things people. done. Yeah. But what I'm yeah. doing right. almost full time is working to win the battle of climate change. Yes, you and in the end, uh, if I offset and contribute my life to do this, uh, I'm not going to be put on the defensive. Well, Russia, what? India, and China have made no commitments, and they're building coal-fired power plants as fast as they can. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're this, just tidy places, though, Joe. They don't matter. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is all silly. It has nothing to do with the climate. It has to do with uh, the financial life of the world and these frauds. Uh, don't even realize that you quite literally, they could not have this summit without fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. well, you know, you had mentioned Halloween, and I know uh, I have certain issues with Rand Paul, but mm -hmm. his, I believe, I, I'm assuming it's his wife, uh, tweeted out a photo of their Halloween costumes in 2008, mm -hmm. in which Rand Paul dressed up as $10 trillion in debt. Mm -hmm. It's up to 30 now. Mm -hmm. That was 13 years ago. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, who regularly lectures us on climate change, arrived in Glasgow fresh from celebrating Microsoft founder Bill Gates' 66th birthday and a $2 million a week super yacht off the coast of Turkey. Neat. In an event that generated fresh claims of green hypocrisy, he reached the boat by helicopter. Uh, okay, again, I'm not opposed to their wealth. I don't. I if I had that kind of money, I I I, I obviously would own a yacht, sure, and a helicopter and a jet, maybe a couple. But I'm not going to lecture you on anything. <laughs> no, <laughs> you you frauds have to stop this. You're you're not only are you ridiculous, you're foolish. You're you're just foolish. You you don't even understand the optics of your own hypocrisy. You look like complete idiots. In Rome, <laughs> Biden had a 38-car motorcade. I've been lucky enough to be in Rome. That clogged the streets. <laughs> a 38-car uh, uh, motorcade. And, and really what we're seeing now is that so-called poorer countries, what climate change means to them is we should pay them. We should pay them so they can catch up, whatever that means. Well, no, they want to build economies. <laughs> So you'd be giving them money to help build economies. Uh, they're all at a castle in Scotland. It looks nifty as heck. And uh, But please, please, uh, you people who are buying this nonsense, you've got to think critically about this. This has nothing to do with the climate. This has to do with an agenda that would uh, completely reorder capitalism. That's all this is. 
It has nothing to do with what the temperature is supposed to be. 83 degrees on Halloween in 1950, November 1st, the following year, a record low of 10 degrees. Nature has always been variable. And to hear these vainglorious saps think that they can control nature is infuriating. <laughs>